Chapter 21 You are listening at NovelFull.audio A long four-column formations of orcs, marched along the almost desolate grounds of the Orsish lands, chanting and shouting as they march along. Their outrageously long spears, clutched on their right arm, pointing proudly to the sky, like they were aiming to pierce the heavens. The circular wooden shields on their left, held steady and true, with parts of it missing. Some had huge chunks of the shield missing, others almost losing a third of its size, the damages to their shields can attest to the battle that they had just gone through. Chins held high, spines straightened like their trusted weapons, they stood almost the same way as their spears. Marching and maintaining that same stance, the chance was their way of relieving their boredom from the monotonous march. They are creatures born for battle and lived for battle, they always thirst for thrill and excitement. Adhalia stared at them, wondering how did such creatures described as unruly and selfish became like this, all disciplined and united. Her gaze soon went back to the still sleeping Xiao Chen, the leader, perhaps the trainer and pillar of this well-disciplined orcs. The unfriendly gaze of Drigana was making her uncomfortable and nervous, with the slightest mistake, this unfriendly female orc might just pounce on her there and then. And reuniting with her family was the last thing on her mind before she accomplishes her vow. Finally, the comfortably sleeping orc had awakened, easing at Halia's nervousness as she had now someone to talk to and keep her mind occupied and forget the threatening glares of the female orc who had been maintaining it for many hours. Finally, you're awake. She said and quickly sighed in relief, it was like she had been sitting in a chair filled sharp needles for the last few hours. The eyes of the two orcs flanking Xiao Chen made her feel like she was being watched by two dangerous predators and she was their prey. What happened? Xiao Chen can't help but ask curiously as he noticed the uncomfortable and nervous look in Adhalia's face. She behaved like a suspect being interrogated all nervous and uncomfortable until her lawyer finally showed up to save her from her predicament, which was him. Ugh that they happened, Xiao Chen was confused and glanced at Gurkan and Drigana. What's wrong, Chief, Gurkan asked him with a look of confusion and Drigana just kept her silence and withdrew her gaze from Adhalia. Ugh that what really happened? Xiao Chen now was more confused than before and can't help but satisfy his curiousness. They had been staring at me for hours with a very unfriendly look. It was like they were telling me that they can't wait to devour me alive, I don't know Orsish nor do I have the courage to speak with them even if I knew it. It seemed like they are against my very presence around you. Um. Especially that female orc. She was giving me the vibe of danger. Like a cat with its tail stepped on. It seemed that I angered her quite a lot, but I can't remember doing anything against her nor have I spoken to her before. Kindly ask her of the reason while she was staring daggers at me, Adhalia rapidly said, like a little child complaining to her elders or parents. Her cute little face looked aggrieved, like she was just punished for something that she didn't even do nor knew about. The childishness of her actions, Xiao Chen found it kind of cute, he never experienced having a sibling in his past life, so he didn't know anything about it but Adhalia was giving her the vibe of being a little sister even though she is older than him by two years. Orcs reach adulthood at the early age of 14, their body's development was much quicker than that of humans. Upon reaching 14 years of age, an orc female or male can now join the adults of the tribe and the race in doing what adults are only allowed to do like joining the battles against the pink skins. An orc's adulthood was also when the demon's curse awakens within their blood, making them strong but also makes them bloodthirsty. Most orcs die young because of the demon's curse right after their adulthood. It was part of their adulthood ceremony where they kill their first, all orcs undergoing the ceremony would then be thrown at, on what they call, the pit, which resembles the human's gladiatorial arena. In the pit, orcs will battle against their own peers where they will be baptized by blood, only the strong survives and the weak left to die. Males and females are equal in orc society but males mostly are rulers since rarely will you find a female orc that triumphs over all the males in the tribe. 
Upon noticing Adhalia's finger pointed at her, Drigana can't help but glare at her then looked at Xiao Chen, she better not be cursing or defaming me dot or else I'll flatten those oversized breasts of hers, Drigana said as she glared at Adhalia again before withdrawing her gaze and just stared at the distance. Xiao Chen was at loss for words, what is up with this female orc, she wasn't like this before nor ever came close to what she is behaving now, he thought. Xiao Chen's gaze went to Adhalia and was about to speak when he was suddenly alerted by the sound of the war drums, signaling the presence of possible danger. Getting off the wagon along with Drigana and Gurkhan, they rushed forward to find out what was the reason of the war drums signaling for danger. What's the situation? Xiao Chen asked as he finally reached the forefront of the marching formation and behind him was Dri Gana and Gurkan who were panting lightly unlike Xiao Chen who had a haste spell casted on himself making his walking speed almost like that of a sprint. A battle is up ahead chief, mounted humans are fighting against a group of ogre marauders, Trotthar reported, his gaze was still staring in the distance. Trotthar's ability to see further than any orc was a huge help for Xiao Chen and his army, being able to see the enemies before they see them was a huge advantage to any army. Chief, the mounted humans holds a golden-colored banner with a circle and a crescent moon stuck together and are being overpowered, Trotthar continued to report not withdrawing his gaze and observed the ongoing battle more. Missions available missions asterisk save the high priestess, urgent mission, reward. 5000 points. Earn the friendship of the high priestess failure. Hostility of the Goddess of Light asterisk save Commander Eru reward. 2000 points asterisk slay all the Ogre Marauders reward. 2000 points failure. Survivors will come for vengeance the sudden issuance of the mission by the system surprised Xiao Chen while he was still considering whether to meddle with the Ogres or not. Quickly skimming through the issued missions, he saw the penalty for failing the first mission which was the hostility of the goddess of light, shit, are there really gods and goddesses here in this world, he thought. Earning the hostility of a god or goddess, Xiao Chen had no plans of doing so, this early. Battle formations, full steps march, Xiao Chen commanded then his command was soon relayed by the war drums. Clouds of dust soon rose up and gathered as the 1st Xian Infantry Battalion rearranged their formation as quickly as possible. Eight rectangular in shape formations soon formed, the leftmost was that of the Black Tortoise Group while the rightmost was that of the Vermilion Bird Group. Eight orcs standing shoulder to shoulder, five to seven orcs deep. The quick response of the 1st Xian Infantry Battalion made Adhalia speechless. Her eyebrows raised and became curved and high, her pupils dilated and her jaw dropped down. Their movements were swift and precise, they knew where they should be and the distances between each formation were almost similar. Such disciplined quick response was unheard of, even the Arian royal army that was proud of their ability to form up quickly was nowhere near the speed and neatness of the 1st Xian Infantry Battalion. Chapter 22 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The 1st Xian Infantry Battalion marched forward in their battle formation with full steps, marching with haste, kicking up clouds of dust as they move. Trotthar, keep an eye on the ogres and inform me of any relevant information, Xiao Chen said as he marches alongside his army, thinking of ways to convince the mounted humans that they are not hostile. Dot, Commander Eru, we need to find a way to let the High Priestess escape, a knight mounted on a black stallion said as he approached his commander who was doing his best to drive the savage ogres away from where the High Priestess is at. Savage Monsters We haven't had proper sleep for days because of them, Commander Eru said angrily as he threw away a huge ogre towards its fellow ogres and knocking them down to the ground. He had a thin figure like that of a woman a long and thick blonde hair that covered his entire forehead almost poking his eyes, he had quite the good dot looking face, a lady dot killer type of face. He is a captain of the Light's Order, protector of the Holy Priestess and the teachings of the Goddess of Light. He doesn't have the look of a warrior nor a knight, he looked much more like a pampered noble son who spends a lot of time playing with women, his dazzling smile made a lot of girls scream in glee wherever they go, his companions even gave him the moniker, Ladies' Man, because of his ability to make all ladies very fond of him with just his smile. 
He was proficient with strengthening and fortification spells which allowed him to be as resilient as a city wall and strong enough to topple even ogres who are known to sometimes overpower the war.Loving race, the orcs. Commander Eru was given such a moniker by his peers but contrary to it, he was a devoted and loyal man, he only had his eyes on the high priestess Luna and made a vow to himself that he will protect her even at the cost of his own life. Backpedaling a bit, he dodged an ogre's huge club then retaliated with his trusty claymore, leaving behind a nasty gash on the ogre's abdomen. With his strengthening spell, he quickly toppled the suffering ogre who was clutching his bleeding stomach and preventing his innards from coming out. Blood, a lot of blood and some of the ogre's intestines spilled out of the nasty wound inflicted by him, the heavy scent of metal, long had filled the air, a little sniff and look will send anyone with a weak will and stomach to surely puke at the sight of so much gore in the surroundings and heavy scent of blood that had long polluted the air. Human bodies with some parts missing, bitten off by the ogres, squashed human meat like a medicinal paste, intestines, eyeballs, heads and other human body parts were littered all over the place. How many of us are left? Commander Eru glanced at his second in command. A middle dot aged man with a thick mustache and sideburns, stern looking face and piercing eyes. We already lost four platoons sir, those who are left, still able to fight are scattered and their numbers, barely enough to form a single platoon, sir. His second in command reported as he slid down on the ground after quickly dismounting, giving his ogre opponent some heavy wounds on the ankles restricting him in place. With quick practiced maneuvers, he scaled the ogre's body and plunged his sword on the ogre's left eye, the ogre then roared in pain and tried to slap the pesky human away but only managed to hit nothing but air. The veteran knight already jumped down on the ground after successfully blinding the ogre's left eye, with precise timing, Commander Eru then pulled the ogre's right leg and made it fall down to the ground with a loud thud, the ogre's head slammed against a huge rock, knocking it out of consciousness. With a quick jump, he stood just above the ogre's chest and with both hands on his claymore, slashed at his opponent's neck, blood sprayed and bathed him with blood, his armor and clothes that were previously soaked with blood but already dried because of time were soaked wet yet again with the fresh blood. Wiping his face clear of the ogre's blood, he approached his second in command who was already panting heavily, they were fending off the ogres for hours already and lost many of their companions. There were six platoons escorting High Priestess Luna on her return from the capital of the Threean Kingdom after finishing the task given to her by the Archbishop Kala. Observing the progress of the situation, they had no chance of successfully defeating the ogres, his men were already tired and even he himself was already near his limits, his mana also almost depleted after fighting for a long time. Commander Eru finally made a decision and approached the High Priestess Luna's mount, a very fine white stallion majestic yet also very violent and only listens to the High Priestess. High Priestess, we won't last much longer. We will carve a path on the ogre's encirclement and give you a way to escape. I can only spare you two knights and my second in command as escorts, the rest will delay the ogres and deny them of any chance in pursuing you, he said with his head lowered like an obedient child to his master. The steady gaze of the High Priestess soon waned, her clear blue eyes soon started to moist, tears threatening to spill out. She had the look of someone who was just wronged but she had to maintain her composure, she must be strong, steady and fearless like how she was trained to be since young. His feelings for her, she knew of it very well but the church's teachings forbid her of expressing her true feelings nor allows her to return the gallant knight's feelings for her. It was a taboo for a high priestess to fall in love with someone nor ever learn the relationships between men and women but she had long known these things, since she was still being trained with the teachings of the church and before becoming a priestess, she had long been with Commander Eru when he was also just a simple trainee knight. May the goddess of light give you strength and bless your souls. She will not forget your sacrifices, high priestess Luna soon said and choking at the end of her words and tears started to trickle down her face. Commander Eru raised his head and smiled at her, that same smile that he had always shown her, the smile of satisfaction whenever he accomplishes something. I'll come find you that I promise. Don't cry that the goddess will protect and guide me as much as she guides and protects you, he said then called upon the two nearest knights and his second in command. 
protect the high priestess with your lives, will make a path for your retreat. Keep her well protected or I swear, I'll haunt you the ends of this world, he said then turned around to aid and rally the remaining knights who were about to collapse because of exhaustion. Knights of the Light Order, heed my command. We'll carve a path for the high priestess escape. May the goddess help and guide us. He bellowed and was passionately replied by the scattered knights, fighting with more energy in zealousness. They were forming a path of escape, the knights fought with renewed vigor as they drive the ogres to the sides and clearing a path in the middle. Don't forget your promise. High Priestess Luna said as she took a glance for the last time at Commander Eru who just smiled and waved at her before continuing to battle the ogres. High Priestess Luna along with two knights and Commander Eru's second-in-command gallop away with their mounts and successfully escape the ogre encirclement. Just behind her, High Priestess Luna could hear the screams of agony of the knights left behind to hold off the ogres. She knew very well that they were left behind to die, and Commander Eru's promise, she knew it was almost impossible but she can't help but hold on to it, and believe in him. Praying silently to the Goddess of Light for Commander Eru's survival and his knights who bravely remained to let them escape. Please. 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 Protect him. Dun, why, Goddess. Just this once. Hear my selfish prayers. She muttered in a low voice, her face already wet from the tears that trickled down her eyes. Chapter 23 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Commander Eru raised his claymore and was barely able to deflect an ogre's club he was sent stumbling backwards and struggled to regain his footing. His arms felt like jelly already, he could barely lift his arms and defend himself. His legs threatening to buckle as they were now clearly trembling due to fatigue. Glancing left and right, his sweat-covered gorgeous face can't help but turn ugly. His clear brown eyes filled with hopelessness as he watched his fellow knights get killed, squashed, bitten and defeated by the ogres. My goddess dot protect my beloved from harm, he silently prayed then looked back again at the triumphing ogres after closing his eyes a bit to pray for the safety of the high priestess. His eyes now filled with resolve to take as many ogres as possible with him to the afterlife, his possible death, he already accepted it. He will happily die protecting her. Boom, 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 boom. A fast dot paced beating of drums caught Commander Eru's attention and his knights and even the ogres glanced at the direction where the sound was originating from. There in the distance, he saw an extremely rare sight, the war dot loving race marching together with discipline not breaking their formation, even for a bit. The perfect synchronized movement of their legs, the almost perfect battle line from the left flank to the right. Commander Eru's pupils can't help but dilate at what he is seeing but soon a complicated look replaced the look of surprise in his face. We're totally screwed. One of the surviving knights exclaimed in frustration, helplessness was apparent in his eyes and had given up trying to resist their inevitable end. Gather on me. Form a circle. He bellowed loudly to rally his men who had given up resistance and were now slump on the ground, just waiting for their executioners to do the deed. The knights who had already given up, sloppily gathered near Commander Eru and slowly formed a circular formation. The circular formation would allow them to respond to attacks from all sides. The war.loving race, the orcs, stopped a good distance away from them. Commander Eru and his men were nervously awaiting at what the orcs would do, their hands gripped their weapons tighter to prevent their hands from trembling, their already sweaty foreheads perspired even more because of their uncertainty about the orcs whether they are friends or foe, or just some passers-by, but basing on their stance, they aren't just simply passing by. A whooshing sound whistled through the air as spears rained down, Commander Eru prepared and gathered his remaining mana to cast a magic barrier if needed be. To Commander Eru's and the remaining knight's surprise, the spears struck the ogres and decimated their numbers. The rain of spears halved the number of the ogres. Impaled by longer, with thicker shafts and barbed spearhead spears, the surviving ogres started to panic, the howls of agony of the ogres who weren't killed outright by the thrown spears echoed. At the forefront of the orc army, he spotted an almost seven-foot-tall green-skinned orc with bulging muscles, a long dot braided hair probably reaching his waist, giving commands to the orc army. 
By the light, what is going on? The knight to Commander Eras left exclaimed as they watched the orc army lower their spears and started marching forward, their steps totally in sync as they moved. The first two lines had their spears pointing forward, the next two rows pointing slightly upwards, followed by the next two lines whose spears were raised at a higher angle than the ones in front of them, the rest at the rearmost had their spears pointing directly to the sky. Boom, 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 the pace of the war drum's beat slowed down a notch from the previous pace it had, every beat of the war drum, the orc army stepped forward, left, right, left. They were displaying discipline and coordination perfectly much like elite soldiers. The orcs marched forward with their outrageously long spears dangerously getting closer and closer. The ogres rallied together, shouting in an unknown language, waving their primitive weapons before charging forward. The ogres charged forward the forest of spears bravely or stupidly, getting their bodies mercilessly skewered by the long spears. Some of the orcs' long spears had their wooden shafts snap into two with a loud cracking sound. Hold, 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 push. Xiao Qin commanded and at the same time, shields were thrusted forward with such strength that some of the wooden shields broke apart. The ogres got pushed back away from the formation and had to break through again against the new wall of spears presented at them. Commander Eru and his men were in awe as they watched the orcs easily repel the ogres and slowly reducing their numbers. Thrusting with their spears then shoving them away with their shields when they get too close, the orcs perform these actions in synchronized rhythm. Xiao Chen acted with his men, moving together with them in killing the ogres, the battle against the Galuks, he didn't participate much but now he had to control his army closely and not let them arouse the hostility of the remaining knights, which can result in the failure of his missions. Commander Eru and his men watch closely at the almost perfect fighting style of the orcs. Moving forward in an almost perfect horizontal line, their outrageously long spears relentlessly piercing the now hapless ogres who were supposed to be able to match the orcs. Hours later, bodies of ogre were now everywhere, dead bodies, bodies riddled with holes from the orc spears. Some unfortunate ogres had multiple holes in their body, closely packed together. The good dot looking commander and his men stared in disbelief at the very odd orc army that just obliterated the ogres who had almost slaughtered them all. The orc army stood in formation but now their spears were all pointed upwards which seemed like they were waiting for the next command to be given before they move. Spreading his gaze around the battlefield, Commander Eru saw no fallen orc among the scattered dead bodies around, only those hanging at the rear of their formation who were nursing their wounds or those who had lost their weapons. The green-skinned orc who Commander Eru suspected to be the commander of this orc army soon came forward, walking slowly towards them and only halted a few paces away. His thoughts were in a total mess, the orc commander seemed to want to communicate with them. Fixing his bearings to be presentable and respectful, he walked forward, steadily and snappily utilizing what he had learned during his trainings. Greetings. Brave human warriors, Xiao Chen said in Irian language, hoping that the good. Looking knight in front of him speaks the same language since it was the only human language that he knows that is applicable in this world. Commander Eru was dumbfounded, his eyebrows raised and became curved and high, wrinkles appeared on his forehead, his pupils dilated, and his mouth opened wide in disbelief. He had not expected that an orc knew how to speak a human language nor bothered to learn one, since orcs were notorious for their aggressive nature and didn't bother negotiating nor try to communicate diplomatically ever. Greetings to you two. Chieftain, Commander Eru paused a bit after his greetings since he didn't know what is the title nor standing of the orc he was communicating with, glancing at the still standing orc's information and trying to find any hint that could help him identify to which tribe do they belong to. The sound of approaching horses could be heard coming from where the high priestess retreated to, turning around, Commander Eru saw the majestic white steed of the high priestess and on its back was his one and only beloved and behind her was his second in command and the two knights who he entrusted her safety to, yelling at her to stop and not do anything foolish. Chapter 24 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Dismounting from her mount quickly, High Priestess Luna jumped towards Commander Eru and embracing him as tight as she can. I can't go on without you, I'll accompany you to death if I must but never shall I abandon you, 
thought she said, tears running down quickly from her eyes, her sobbing, her unstable emotions, gone were the strong, steady and brave guises of her. The only thing left was her real self, the real Luna, not the high and mighty height priestess of the light but a young woman, who needs to be comforted like any other. It's all right. Don't cry. You look ugly when you cry. I'm still here, well and alive and continue to protect you from any harm. I kept my promise. Commander Era said, his voice was as soft as it could be, he was also overwhelmed with emotions but he must remain steadfast as the man and prove that he isn't just a guy with a good dot looking face. The two were being lovey dot dovey in front of the surviving knights, who weren't a big problem because they are under the vow of silence, never speak about anything they hear, see, or smell even feel about the holy priestess or the goddesses of light will smite then for breaking the vow. The real problem would be the presence of hundreds of orcs, armed and ready for battle just waiting for a command to be given. Ahem dot ahem. Xiao Chen cleared his throat loudly as he tried to get the attention of the lovey dot dovey couple who are publicly displaying their affection for each other. Finally, the two noticed the situation and their cheeks turned beet red from embarrassment, especially the high priestess Luna who refused to show her face and continued to hide in Commander Eru's chest. I hate to disturb your affectionate reunion, but we still need to clear the battlefield and treat the wounded, Xiao Chen said while pointing at the scattered bodies of the fallen and those who are still moaning in pain, bleeding and waiting for someone to rescue them from the jaws of death or for death to embrace them. Commander Eru had an awkward look on his face on top of his embarrassment as he clumsily tried to free himself from the tight embrace of the High Priestess Luna who still refused to show her face, which was still rosy because of what just happened. A few hours later, the rest of Xiao Chen's horde finally arrived at the scene of battle and brought with them the much dot needed medicinal supplies to treat the wounded. The injured knights were wary of the orcs trying to help them up but their wariness soon faded as they watched their commander and the high priestess conversing with who seemed to be the leader of these orcs. You have our gratitude, orc chief, Commander Eru said, bowing down his body almost 90 dot degrees to show how much he was thankful for. The high priestess Luna shed her haughty pretense and just like any other normal woman, thanked the orc commander by also bowing down towards him and ignoring the teachings of the church that a high priestess only bows down to the goddess and no one else. After receiving the gratitude of the couple, Xiao Chen and his army went on their ways, back home. Along with them were the Galuk tribe members who will bolster the population of the tribe. The previous encounter with the ogre showed Xiao Chen a weakness of the phalanx formation that wasn't supposed to be a weakness. More resilient enemies, like the ogres could break through the wall of spears and decimate his soldiers within the formation nullifying the advantage of the closely packed spears. The long spears were also snapped into two by the ogres with the stronger momentum of their charge and more tough skins. A soldier with no spear in a phalanx formation is like a tiger without its fangs and claws. Xiao Chen's brain gear started to spin again as he was busy trying to remember the ancient warfare of his past world. Discipline and unity, he had already taught his men these things, what he needed is a more effective system of combat that could adapt to any circumstances. Chief, you seem to be in deep thoughts, Sakaran nudged his ward Black Wind beside the absent-minded chieftain as he noticed, the chief's serious face, his brows knitting together, and his eyes staring far off in the distance. The chief was physically present but his mind is somewhere else. Ah. Nothing much that I am just thinking of a better way. A more efficient way for us to engage enemies in the battlefield that the fight with the ogres showed me something that must be addressed, Xiao Chen said after hearing Sakaran's worried voice and Black Wind staring at him from time to time, like she was anticipating something. After a few more days added to their marching schedule, the 1st Xian Infantry Battalion finally reached the walled village. The Galuk stared at the strange sight, a high wooden wall which could only be seen among the settlement of the pink skins, a field of green like the farmlands of the humans but this farmland was different. The crops were planted within a box-shaped land. There were many box-shaped lands, maybe a hundred or even more, the land was flooded with water turning the soil into mud. 
the chief calls them rice fields. It will supply us with a new type of food which he calls rice, one of the orcs near the Galooks who were marveling at the strange and odd sight before them. Orcs being farmers, that was unusual since orcs were known to be almost always in a battlefield, they are always on the move. Fighting and battling as warriors that they should be, orcs never procure their own food, most of their supplies were plundered from their poor victims or hunted from the wild creatures that roam the land. Meat was the most common food that orcs consume, the rest like fruits and vegetables were rarely eaten by them. The number of wild creatures that roamed the land were dwindling fast, their numbers no longer enough to sustain the need of the war. Loving Race Tribal wars were often triggered by the dispute over hunting grounds, tribes come and go as the years go on. The harsh reality of the Orsish lands was that the stronger ones shall survive while the weak will cease to exist. Along with the bite of the demon's curse, the population of orcs are quickly going down. The pink skins need not to interfere anymore and sooner or later, the orc race will collapse on its own, by their own hands. Sure, they are feared by many, especially when they amass in great hordes and go on plundering. Simple settlements will be easily raised by them, the human settlements with no towering walls to keep them out were often their victims. Orcs tried raiding walled human settlements before but it was futile, with no real leadership and plans, they fail more often than they succeed which forced the orcs to ignore almost every walled human settlement. Looking at the rice fields that Shao Chen had taught Rakashtha to make, he smiled and amazed by the old witch doctor's ability to learn and his curiousness to learn new things. Rakashtha stumbled upon Shao Chen's plans of making the rice fields and was intrigued and interested in it, especially what rice would taste like and orcs can finally have a steady food supply and won't depend on their luck during hunts anymore. Chapter 25 You are listening at NovelFull.audio A few days of thinking, Shao Chen finally decided to model his army after the legionnaires of the Roman Empire. Their feats and success in battle in the ancient era was something truly worthy of praise. Checking out the total number of combatants available for him to utilize, he now has a total of 1296 warriors including the newly absorbed Galuk tribe members. Organizing the composition of his army in his plans, Shao Chen called the entirety of his warriors, the combatant ones. Reorganizing the army, the officers are still Sakharan, Trotthar, Gurkhan and Drigana but now instead of the phalanx, they will be restructured into a new type of formation. Dividing them still into four groups with two platoons each, but now each platoon will have 12 squad each with each squad having 13 men or 14 in the case of the first six squads in each platoon. What came afterward was the intense training which Shao Chen had devised, a full set of exercise for the entire body to help the Galuks match with the physical capabilities of the Archons. Why is the chief tiring us out, we should be resting instead of being exhausted under the hot sun, one of the Galuk tribe members complained as he was now panting after two rounds of running, since the Galuk weren't accustomed to these new things that was introduced to them. If you aren't asked to talk, don't talk. If you are told to chant, you chant. That where the chief points to, you go. What he wants you to do, do it. If you utter more nonsense, I'll let him accompany you in the battle pit, Sakharan yelled pointing his finger at the towering Galamnor running just a few paces away from him as he heard the complaints of the Galuk warrior, he knew that all the Galuks are thinking of the same thing and he must discipline them as the chief requires them to. After completing the rounds of running, the Galuk tribe members collapse on the ground, their trembling legs no longer able to support their weight as they buckled. Gasping for air as they stared at the clear bright sky, the unhappy grunts of the Galuks filled the place. Ha ha ha. Puny ones. And you call yourselves warriors. A few rounds of running is already enough to make you this exhausted. Galamnor bellowed loudly as he pointed at the Galuk suffering from exhaustion. The Archons soon joined him in his laughter, they were like the Galuks before, but it felt refreshing for them to know the difference between undergoing the chief's strange trainings and not. Just like before, Shao Chen shouted for them to get into their new formation. Eight platoons consisting of twelve squads each platoon, the pace of forming wasn't as quick and clean as before due to the unfamiliarity of his men to the new formation. 
The Galuks earned a few slaps at the back of their head for not knowing what to do and where to go from their commanders and even from their own peers, the Archons who knew the chief very well. Undergoing additional rounds and being denied of the prime beef, they didn't want to experience it again, if possible. Each group had an even number of men, 324 strong warriors, 162 in each platoon with 12 squads. The new formation needed to be revised in the future but with the low number of available soldiers, Xiao Chen will have to make do of what he has for the meantime. Push.ups, sit.ups and other modern-day physical exercises were introduced to the Galuks which sapped them all of their energy. The feeling of exhaustion that they are suffering was almost the same as the bite of the demon's curse but unlike the demon's curse, their hatred for everything is only directed at their commanders and the chief. Staring at the unhappy faces of his men, Xiao Chen can't help but show a satisfied smile. He loves his role as the villain during training, he knew, the commanders knew and even the Archons knew what an advantage his training could give during battles, only the Galuk were the only ones who are complaining and unhappy about it. The new part of the training the Xiao Chen introduced was for each squad members to stay together in the same tent, sleep together, eat together, train together and suffer together in order to promote more unity among them. The unhappy grumblings of the Galuks immediately vanished as the prime beef was distributed. The foreign taste tickled their taste buds and made them crave more of it to which the Archons only chuckled. Early in the morning before dawn, the noisy loud sound of the war drums awakened the Galuks who were happily snoring in their sleep. Forcing their sleepy eyes open, they saw their squad mates quickly moving around. Wake up! You lazy bastards. Wake up before the commanders makes their rounds and punishes us, an Archon Orc shouted towards his companions and giving those who are still asleep a good kick to wake them. Tired and sleepy, the Galuks joined the Archons in formation, their bodies swaying left and right, their brains still not awakened fully. I see you guys are still dreaming, drop down and give me fifty. Xiao Qin shouted and his men spread out as they got into push-up positions, curses and angry grumblings could soon be heard as Xiao Qin smiled like a villain he is. When I say down that you go down and restore to starting position, Xiao Qin shouted again as he paced around his men who are down on the ground ready to suffer. Because some of you are still asleep down. He could hear curses as he walked around the formations, because somebody is cursing. Down. Xiao Qin continued until his men hit 50, the curses and angry grumblings still continued which Xiao Qin really anticipated to happen and the angry stares of his men made him more happy, because some of you still are whining like babies. Down. Because some of you are angrily staring at me, down. Because somebody just cursed at me, down, noel.n, because some of you aren't performing properly, down. Because some of you are just lying down, down. Because I just want you to, down. Because I just feel like it, down. Xiao Qin continued on as he observed his men, their looks were like they can't wait to tear him apart into pieces. Finally, after doing more than probably 200 or more push-ups, his men finally learned their lesson, especially the Galuks, that Xiao Qin won't end their suffering if they won't cooperate. After a few warm-up exercises, the rounds of running that the Galuks dreaded finally followed but what surprised them was that the chief joined them in running. Xiao Chen was running just beside them and keeping a pace the same as theirs, observing them as they run. Get out of my way and stand aside Johan army member is passing by get out of our way we're coming through and if you don't, we're gonna mess with you and if you're smart don't mess with me we are the warriors of the Johan tribe you, ya. Way. Get out the way you, ya. Way. Just another sweaty day, the chanting started with the commanders shouting the lines first then repeated by the soldiers. It was their way of keeping themselves on the same running pace and to keep their minds occupied and not think about themselves getting tired. Xiao Chen finally decided to give his tribe a name base on the old Orsish after consulting with Rakashta and came up with the name, Yohan, which means, you. Han, the strong and his tribe will be named as the Johan tribe and his army the warriors of Johan. The 1st Xian Infantry Battalion name will now be replaced with the 1st Johan Battalion since Xian was in Mandarin and the tongue of the orcs can't utter it while turning Xian into kin which makes it lose its meaning. 
Chapter 26 You are listening at NovelFull.audio For two weeks straight, Xiao Chen pushed his men to their limits, exhausting them every day in trying to trigger their bottom line. On the 21st day of training a Galuk warrior finally had enough and expressed his frustrations, what's the use of exhausting us every single day? It serves no purpose that we the orcs are natural born warriors that we were born for war and lived for war. Treating us like this is a disgrace for any warrior. An orc's honor and strength is proven in battle. Not through this useless daily tiring routine. A burly Galuk orc, with reddish brown skin, long unkempt hair that reaches his shoulders, huge bulging veined arms, was finally fed up with Xiao Chen's orders. How dare you challenge the chief's will! Gherkin stride forward with huge steps toward the complaining Galuk warrior, his fists were tightly clenched, anger was apparent in his face and his eyes were filled with nothing but coldness. Chiefs will dot must follow. Galamnor bellowed and thumped his chests like a gorilla and angrily charged forward towards the complaining Galuk warrior. Keep your eyes open that there is going to be a good fight, Trotter told his men who were staring with confusion at what is going on. Drigana just snorted with annoyance and halted her men to spectate on what is going to happen. Gurkan. Galam Nor. Stay your hand. Let me teach him with a personal lesson. Xiao Chen said with authority as he marched forward, his chest proudly out, his strides full of power, his arms like well-coordinated motors swung back and forth, his back straightened as straight as it can be and he had the menacing aura of a top predator, ready to catch his clueless prey. What do they call you? Xiao Chen questioned the complaining orc with a voice full of authority, he was waiting for this to happen. The chance to display to the newcomers his combat prowess like what he did to his officers and the archons when they challenged his authority when they were fed up with his harsh training. I am called Magaz, chief, the complaining Galuk orc said with a hint of fear as he eyed the massive Galamnor busily staring at him with an excited face who can't wait to pummel him to the ground. Comparing himself to the hulking frame of Galamnor, Magaz knew that he had no chance of winning over the massive orc. Slightly to his left, he saw the cold eyes of Gurkhan, like a viper poised to strike, just waiting for the right moment, the clenched fists of the skinny orc meant he was raring to go and fight him. Magaz, well like those who have undergone my training before. I'll give you a chance, fight me one on one. If you win, you can replace me as the chieftain. But if you lose, You'll do everything. Dot, and I mean everything. I command you to do that doesn't desecrate a warrior's honor and dignity. Xiao Chen said to Magaz, speaking clearly and loudly. Turning his gaze towards the other orcs who were spectating the event, this applies to all of you. You are welcome to challenge me any time. But you must prepare to accept the consequences when you lose, he bellowed with authority, and giving a reminder to all those who can't wait to tear him apart, limb by limb. Choose your weapons, Xiao Chen ushered Magaz towards the equipment storage and stood where he was at. A few moments later, Magaz came out fully armed, on his hands were two big swords, the sword had many dents but the dents only made it more dangerous than before, with sharp teeth spread out along its length like a saw, which could inflict a very painful wound. Magaz stared at the chieftain who had his arms crossed in front of his chest, eyeing him from head to toe, he didn't know what came over him but Chief's eyes reminded him of the eyes of a powerful predator in the mountains, the Dargan. Much like a Dargan that observes its prey first carefully before attacking, Magaz can't help but become nervous as the friendly aura of the chieftain change into that of a bloodthirsty warrior, the baleful aura of blood like the famed berserkers of the old hordes. I hope you're ready. Xiao Chen said then sprinted forward towards Magaz with an unbelievable speed just like a knocked arrow on a bow that was just released. Magaz can't help but be surprised, the chief was fighting him barehanded. The chief is either brave and confident enough on his fighting skills or he is just a fool, Magaz thought and raised the sword on his right hand above his head ready to strike down while his left hand clutching a sword prepared to intercept any sudden surprised attack. There. Magaz muttered and grinned, the chieftain is done for, he thought as he imagined becoming the new chieftain, his right hand came crashing down towards Xiao Chen and he was sure that he can defeat him with just that slash. But contrary to his expectations, Magaz saw the chief spin, using his right foot as a pivot and evaded his slash. 
A heavy strike landed under his chin, making his head jerked backwards, his vision a little blurry and his footing unsteady. Xiao Chen gave Magaz a solid uppercut after evading his strike with a simple spin. Not giving him any chance to regain his bearings, Xiao Chen went on the offense. Charging forward like lightning, he grabbed Magaz's left hand, twisted it towards his back. Magaz uttered a painful moan as his hand was twisted behind his back, the pain caused him to let go of the sword which fell on the ground with a clang. Disarming one of Magaz's weapons, Xiao Chen kicked him forwards on the back as he evaded a wild swing from Magaz's remaining sword. With a loud thud, Magaz crashed on the ground, his face slid on the rough hard ground causing some small cuts and bruises on his face. Magaz tried to get up but something heavy was on his back preventing him from getting on his feet. The small cuts on his face caused a stinging pain like it was being pricked by multiple thorns at the same time, the warm feeling of his blood made him angry. He felt like his honor as a warrior is being stepped on. With a loud shout he tossed the chieftain on his back away and finally got back on his feet. Quickly turning around to confront the chieftain, but what he saw was not the chieftain's face but a green foot fast approaching towards his face. With a painful grunt, Magaz stumbled backwards, his vision starting to change from clear to dark, he saw many white star dot like sparkling dots wherever he looks at. Swaying left and right, like a drunk, suddenly a strong blow on his abdomen forced him to his knees. Heek. Magaz uttered a sound filled with pain as Xiao Chen gave him a solid punch to the abdomen with a powerful right hook, knocking the wind out of his lungs. Xiao Chen stared at the kneeling Magaz who is experiencing great pain as he was clutching his abdomen and had a hard time trying to breathe. You lose, Xiao Chen said and walked away from the suffering Magaz and towards the spectators. You see that that even while unarmed that I defeated him. That's the purpose of training. The pain and sufferings that you are experiencing now that will be the one that will save your lives in the battlefield. A properly trained warrior can defeat multiple enemies even without a weapon. Your body is your weapon. Sharpen and strengthen your bodies. And you will survive more battles, Xiao Chen shouted at his men, their eyes full of awe as they witnessed how their chieftain easily defeated Magaz with just his bare hands. Chief, look out, behind you, Gurkan nervously exclaimed as he charged forward to try and save the chief from Magaz's strike. Turning his body quickly and using its momentum, Xiao Chen landed a heavy spin kick towards Magaz's temple. Magaz grinned like a fool as he imagined stabbing Xiao Chen with his sword, making him bleed and taste pain but unexpectedly, something struck his left temple, his ears ringing and his vision turning dark. Slowly Magaz fell face down to the ground, unconscious. He was lucky that his sword didn't accidentally embed itself on his body. Shaking his head, Xiao Chen can't help but click his tongue after looking at the poor state that Magaz was in. Take him to Rakashtha to be treated. And Gurkan. Be gentle, Xiao Chen commanded, he can't help but feel pity for Magaz, he became the sacrifice for him to warn the others and also to instill respect and discipline among his men, like the old idiom goes, kill the chicken to warn the monkeys and the unlucky Magaz became the chicken. Chapter 27 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. After the fiasco with the poor Magaz, Xiao Chen can now relax a bit with his prestige and respect established among the old and new members of his army. He was observing his men from a distance, their breathing being ragged, their bodies covered in sweat and tired but their eyes had a determined look to become stronger and tougher than ever before. Xiao Chen watched the stern-looking Sakaran taking lead in the physical training, his scrutinizing gaze spread out among the warriors of Yohan, from time to time with large and quick strides he would approach a warrior to guide and teach them the proper executions and the sloppy ones earn punishments from him. Like his good old drill instructors during his trainee days in his past world, Sakaran was quick at meeting out punishments. Even sometimes joining the punished warriors to oversee them closely so that they do their sentence correctly. Observing his men from a distance Xiao Chen hummed one of the songs that was engraved in his mind, the first song that accompanied him during his first training days, it's about a year ago a welcome was just an open show it made me tour the fields and plow with rifle liners and combat shoes. Those days were daring the nights were cold water scanty yet sweat profuse food is blessing, 
Rest is playing but all these seems very long then gradually lost privileges restored actions more refined yet brittle like a wild horse turned to pony pristine ones were called to be a group comes in and group comes out some may leave without their ranks o.org some return after a year of pass it's good thing to be a brother all throughout those restless days some may leave. With sweat and pain we never retreat we never yield always aim for the best and give the rest courage, honor and loyalty, Xiao Chen gave his everything to his homeland. He sweated, he bled, he suffered and endured pain and came near to the end of his temperament all for his love for his native land. But what did he receive in return, nothing but just betrayal? After being satisfied with the progress of his army's training, Xiao Chen went out to explore the Lagrana Mountains just behind the Yohan tribe. The ever-silent Eroshana and the ever-curious Rakash that accompanied him to the mountains to search for any natural resources that they could utilize in forming the foundation of his orc city. After passing by the area where they fell many trees for the palisades surrounding the tribe, Shao Chen, Eroshana, and Rakash the arrived at the unexplored parts of the mountains. With careful steps, Xiao Chen and his companions trudged forward towards the Lagrana Mountains paths full of thickets and unknown dangers. Unknown flora and fauna greeted Xiao Chen's sight, they were strange and odd but some of them are useful like the medicinal herbs that Rakash the identified. Xiao Chen was staring at a very strange tree, it wasn't that tall or out of place but what got his attention was its black spherical fruits and the very familiar scent of rubber originating from them. What's this tree called? Xiao Chen asked the approaching Rakashta with his finger pointing towards the strange tree with black spherical fruits that had the odor of rubber. We call that a Bufa's tree and its fruits Bufa's fruits, chief. Xiao Chen was surprised with Rakashta's reply, Bufa's in Orsish means, bouncy, and he can't help but chuckle upon the new knowledge that he just acquired. Bouncy tree and bouncy fruit, he muttered, amused and amazed. Walking forward he picked up one of the bouncy fruits lying around the tree trunk, brought out his sword and sliced it open. Inside the Bufa's fruit were huge seeds like that of a jackfruit and a lot of rubber, the very strong smell of rubber irritated Xiao Chen's sense of smell and he can't help it but cover his nose. That is inedible chief, only the Kural can eat them and not die, Rakash the worriedly cautioned Xiao Chen as he thought that the chief would curiously take a bite out of the poisonous fruit. Well, it isn't edible but there is something that we can use it for, Xiao Chen said with a grin, staring at the numerous Bufa's trees scattered further away, he was thankful for the strange yet magical things of this new world. Now he knew where to get rubber and a lot of it which were commonly just ignored since they didn't know what it is used for. Marking the location of the Bufa's trees on his roughly drawn map, they marched further to explore the other areas. Somewhere two kilometers from the location of the Bufa's trees, Xiao Chen smelled the aroma of roasted meat along with the scent of spices that he had tasted before. Signaling the two to crouch down and spread their gaze out, they cautiously moved forward hiding their presence behind the numerous shrubs, with knees bended and walking like ducks. Rakashta and Eroshana didn't know what their chief was up to and they just followed him and moved like he did. Somewhere in a clearing a few paces away, Xiao Chen spotted a small creature, few inches short of being four feet tall, short hands and legs, long hooked nose, bat-like ears and moss green colored skin. Xiao Chen panned left to right many times, trying to find any sign that can tell him that this was nothing but a trap by the devious goblins but there were no such signs. Observing the lone goblin's actions, Xiao Chen can't help but feel confused, the goblin was humming a song or shrieking softly a song or whatever it was uttering since he doesn't speak their language. Taking some spices from the spread dot out little pots lying around, the lone goblin sprinkled some white substance on the meat that it was roasting which Xiao Chen suspected to be salt, sprinkling a few more different colored powders and brushing it with a sparkling watery substance with the use of some grasses tied together, the lone goblin continued on with its work and was oblivious of those who are observing him. The lone goblin's actions reminded Xiao Chen of something, one of the shows that he saw to pass his time called Chef of the Wilds where a chef will cook delicious and mouth-watering meals with just the things available in his surroundings without the aid of modern technology and tools. 
It was really strange for a goblin to be alone since they are known to be social creatures that heavily relies on their massive numbers and cooperation in order to survive in this brutal world. They often live together in tribes much like the orcs and sometimes even kingdoms if they have a very strong leader and had a very huge population. A goblin chef, Ha, huh, Xiao Chen softly muttered in order not to alert the busy lone goblin chef who was still busy creating its art. He was contemplating whether to recruit the strange goblin or not. Burr, the growling sound of his stomach and the tempting and mouth dot watering aroma of the roasted meat finally convinced Xiao Chen's mind. He wants the goblin chef to work for him, who knows, the goblin might have some secret recipes that can help his army. Chapter 28 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Giving commands to Rakashtha and Eroshana to sneak up on the lone goblin while Xiao Chen himself circle around to cut off its escape route. The lone goblin was in a clearing where a swampland was to its north and a steep cliff to its east which only allows it to escape in two directions, south and west. Xiao Chen crouched down, sneaking as silently as possible and gathering the vines that he can find along his path. Eroshana and Rakashta aren't skilled in sneak attacks nor do they know any knowledge about how to execute it since orcs are warriors and warriors don't hide their presence in battles. Rakashta and Eroshana revealed themselves quickly not bothering to try and sneak up on the lone goblin, they just stood up and marched forward towards the goblin. Xiao Qin can't help but facepalm upon the actions of the two. Ugh. Forgot to give them specific commands. He muttered and just smiled wryly but still kept himself hidden among the thickets scattered around the Lagrana Mountains. Keek. Key. 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 Keek. The lone goblin finally saw Rakashta and Eroshana quickly since they didn't bother trying to mask their presence and just approached the wary goblin. With the two steadily approaching with steady steps, the lone goblin started eyeing their movements. Sneakily the goblin started reaching his hands towards the scattered pots that it placed near the fire. Xiao Chen spotted a metal cauldron and some human cooking tools from where he was hiding. Surrender and you shall not feel pain, Eroshana threatened the goblin, with her huge battle axe at the ready to cleave the scared goblin. Rakash that just stared at the scattered human cooking tools in the possession of the goblin lying around. Kik.ki Grogus does not wrong you. Grogus. Cooking own food, Grogus give meal. Just dot don't hurt Grogus, the lone goblin pleaded, speaking broken and poor Orsish tongue while ushering the two towards the food that it was cooking. The goblin had its head lowered like it was surrendering to the two. Eroshana lowered her raised battle axe and confidently walked forward towards the goblin while Rakashta was still busy looking at the possessions of the goblin. With a quick sneaky move, the goblin tossed one of the bigger pots towards Eroshana, the still hot soup soaked the unwary orc. Damn you, you sneaky bastard Eroshana screamed while trying to get rid of the hot soup that soaked her body, her clothes soaked and the pot's content seared her skin a bit. Wiping her face clear of the mess done by the soup, Eroshana charged forward angrily wielding her battle axe. Upon noticing that the orc didn't get hurt much as he had expected Grogus picked up the pots of spices that he had and hastily threw them towards the angry Eroshana. The fragile pots easily broke after Eroshana swatted them away with her battle axe but a few pots managed to hit her some even hit her right in the face, breaking upon impact and showering her with its contents. Unluckily one of the pots of spice that shattered on her face contained spicy powder, a few of them sprinkled at her eyes. Ah! Eroshana screamed in pain, dropping her battle axe and rubbed her eyes with both hands. Tears started to uncontrollably flow from her eyes, and her vision was blinded by the spicy powder. Key.key.keek, foolish orc, grogus. Kills. Those that take his food. Ki. 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 The goblin laughed at the suffering Eroshana, with large strides Rakash that charged forward towards the goblin with his wooden staff poised to bash the little goblin for hurting his daughter. I'll smash you. You puny rascal, Rakash the angrily yelled as he charged forward. The goblin quickly picked up a metal cauldron nearby and used it to defend against the angry orc's attack. With a loud clang, the goblin successfully defended itself against Rakashta's strike filled with anger but was sent flying a few paces away. 
Scampering to its feet quickly, it stared at Rakashta who tried to comfort and heal Eroshana's pain with his concoctions. Kike.kike.ki, Jiragas.be back, Grogus will revenge.keek.keek. The goblin shouted with his poor broken orsish along with its native shrieking tongue and quickly fled leaving behind its treasured possessions. Xiao Qin was surprised by the goblin's well-thought strategy, faking surrender and striking when the enemy's guard is lowered. He can't help but shake his head after looking at his two undependable companions. He prepared himself to catch the escaping goblin who was unlucky enough to be running exactly towards his hiding spot. With the vines that he had gathered, he prepared a simple trap with them. Tying the vines together and making a knot at one end of the vines which he placed at the path that the goblin was headed to. Waiting patiently for the right moment, Xiao Chen kept himself well hidden among the thickets, his hands gripping tightly the other end of the vines. The goblin was in a hurry, running as fast as possible and wasn't looking carefully at where its feet were stepping on. The goblin wasn't aware of the danger that he was headed to. The goblin's right foot stepped inside the knot made by Xiao Chen with the vines. With a quick powerful tug, the knot tightened against the goblin's foot, the momentum of its sprint sent the goblin tumbling forward as one of its feet got snagged by Xiao Chen's trap. The poor goblin got tripped and crashed to the ground hard after its foot got snagged by the vines. Kike.kike.ki The goblin confusedly stared at the vine that snagged its foot and tripped him, shrieking in confusion and pain, it tried to get its leg free. Xiao Qin grinned with his success and stood up, tugging the other end of the vines and dragging the hapless goblin towards him. The goblin struggled to get its foot free while nervously looking at the grinning Xiao Qin. The goblin was noisily shrieking and thrashing around to get free of the vines tied on its foot but to no avail. Securing the goblin with his right leg by stepping on its chest, Xiao Qin used the length of the vine to bound and secure the noisy goblin who was still trying wiggle itself free. Fully bounding the goblin with the vines, Xiao Qin finally could be at ease. He bounded the goblin like a mummy, covering almost its entire body tightly with the vines but with enough room to let it breathe and live. Keek.key.mercyork.show.mercy upon .weak grogus. The bounded goblin pleaded as snot and tears came out of its slanted sneaky eyes and long hooked nose. Where is that sneaky bastard? Eroshana came out of the thickets angrily, her eyes turned red and still wet with tears as she cleaved the thickets that were impeding her on her path with her battle axe. Rakashta was just behind the angry Eroshana with his wooden staff that had its top end missing after trying to bash the goblin. After noticing the bounded goblin, Eroshana charged forward with her battle axe raised and ready to cleave the sneaky goblin in half. Xiao Chen quickly got on Eroshana's way, shielding the goblin from the angry female orc. Keek.key.key.mercy.mercy, Grogus still want to live, Grogus still want to cook. The goblin pleaded for its life, nervously looking at the angry Eroshana. Calm down that I want him alive. If he is useless, that you can do anything you want with him, Xiao Chen tried to appease Eroshana's anger while giving a look of pity towards the goblin. Eroshana lowered her battle axe and angrily stared at the goblin who was pleading for its life. As you will, Chief Dot but you must give him to me if he is useless, Eroshana replied with reluctance and just stared coldly at the goblin. Keek, kick dot key, grogus dot useful, grogus dot cook, grogus dot show you way. The goblin nervously declared as Eroshana's stares were like the maws of death waiting to devour him. Well, I hope you're useful dot or I'll give you to her, Xiao Chen muttered towards the goblin who was looking at him with hopeful eyes. Rakashta just kept silent and patted his daughter's shoulder and comforted her that she will have her chance to do what she wants with the goblin. Pray to your gods that you are useful you sneaky bastard dot or I'll tear you apart dot limb by limb and boil you in a pot. Eroshana continued to threaten the little goblin who was thankful to Xiao Chen for letting him keep its life. Where do we go now? Chief Rakashta asked Xiao Chen after giving the tiny goblin a cold glance. We will continue to explore the surroundings and if we are lucky, we can find something useful like the Bufa's trees, Xiao Chen said as he stared at his roughly drawn map and trying to locate where they are now. What are we looking for exactly? 
Chief Rakesh the curiously asked as he is confused on what the chieftain was trying to find. Hmm edible food like vegetables and fruits. Raw metal resources like iron ores or if we are lucky gold ores which we can trade with the pink skins with the help of Adhalia or creatures like this one who had expertise in some fields, Shao Chin explained while pointing at the goblin who finally quieted down and accepted its fate of being a captive who had his life depending on Shao Chen's judgment whether he is useful or not. Chapter 29 You are listening at NovelFull.audio After capturing the lone goblin Grogas, Xiao Chen and his companions continued on exploring the Lagrana Mountains. Xiao Chen's main objective was to scout the rear of the tribe whether there are paths for enemies to make utilize in attacking them. So far, Xiao Chen was satisfied with his findings. The location that he had picked was blessed with many natural barriers, the burning sands to the south and the southern tail of the Lagrana Mountains that stretch far beyond the horizon even reaching up until the land of the Pointed Ears to the north covering their west. Probably around 60 kilometers to the north was also the Tikarar Mountains connected with the southern tail of the Lagrana Mountains, curving southeast as it stretches westward and even extends inside the burning sands. The southern part of the Lagrana Mountains was divided by a long, wide, steep and deep ravine carved out by a river that basically prevents any enemy army coming from the east. Marching northward Shao Chen, Eroshana, Rakashta, and the bounded by the vines goblin Grogas who was being closely watched by Eroshana arrived at a swampland. Scattered all around the swampland were bones and rotting corpses, filling the air with a pungent smell of rotten meat. Knitting his brows and trying to expand his vision further, Xiao Chen was very wary of what was in front of them. After spending some time in observing the swampland, Xiao Chen witnessed the rotting corpses snatched by creatures hiding within the swamps. The creatures had long armored body with thick scales, sharp bony spikes jutting out along their spine, they had a long, rounded snout and within those snout were a set of razor-sharp teeth, an enormous length a size maybe twice or thrice that of the alligators that Xiao Chen had seen. They closely resemble the look of alligators but they had two horns on the crown of their heads and a tail that ended with a spiked club. Xiao Chen wouldn't want to march his army in a place filled with these aggressive and scary dot looking creatures and any rational enemy commander of an army wouldn't also. The swampland covered the entirety of the southern part of the Lagrana Mountains on the north side of the Yohan tribe till the ravine to the east. What are we doing here, chief? This place reeks of death and decay, Rakash that came forward with a frown on his face and covering his nose with his free hand. The stench was so overwhelming that even a few paces away from the swampland, they can still sniff the unfavorable smell. We are exploring and finding paths that enemies can make use of in attacking the tribe, and luckily the tribe is safe from any surprise attack coming from here, Xiao Chen replied and fanned the front of his nose trying to ward off the rotting stench. He quickly turned around and retraced their steps back to where they found Grogas. I hope you'll try to escape, so that I can have an excuse to cleave you into pieces, Eroshana snorted towards Grogas who Xiao Chen was freeing from the vines that bounded him. Jiragas.no try.escape, Grogas behaved. and cook, Grogas replied, his eyes trembling after looking at the angry stare of the still angry Eroshana. Retracting his gaze at the displeased female orc, Grogas focused his sight on the freshly killed boar that was unfortunate enough to be spotted by Eroshana. Staring at the wounds inflicted on the boar by the hot dot tempered female orc. Grogas can't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva in fear, Eroshana almost cleaved the poor boar into two by it's supposed to be waste if it stands on its hind legs. Don't do anything that you'll surely regret later, Rakash the warned Grogas as he kept a close eye on the goblin who was going to cook their meal and giving back the remaining pots of spices. Grogas. Cook. Grogas. Make good food, the goblin reassured the wary Rakash the while patting his chest, he was eager to prove his usefulness to the chief or else the smirking female orc who is staring at him will surely tear him apart with her huge axe that she was sharpening with a rough piece of stone that she found lying around making audible chinking sounds. Gutting and cutting the boar into pieces with a small sharp blade, Grogas' actions were refined and skillful proving that he had done these many times already. He was treated as an outcast in his tribe because of his ambition of being a great cook which the goblins see as meaningless. 
Much just like the orcs, strength and power is all that matters among goblins, the strong prey upon the weak and the weak treated so badly that they die an untimely death. Grogus was often bullied in his tribe and it came to the point where he can't take it no more, armed with his knowledge earned from closely watching how humans cook, he left his tribe from the far north beyond the swampland where they had just been at. He was lucky to have been ignored by the creatures that hid within the swamp and made it out of it alive. After waiting for some time, a mouth-dot-watering aroma permeated the air, a soup made of vegetables that Grogus foraged around while being tailed by Aroshana and the boar meat. The scent of the boar meat being roasted also had a very flavorsome smell that tempted Aroshana to take a bite already. Serving his work to the three hungry orcs who had their stomachs growling for quite a while now. Aroshana almost started to devour Grogus cooking when she was suddenly stopped by her chieftain. You take a bite first, Xiao Chen motioned Grogus to eat first the meal that he had cooked. Grogus stared at Xiao Chen with confused eyes, wondering what the orc was up to, even Aroshana stared at Xiao Chen wanting to know the reason why the chief stopped her. Just to make sure, you didn't add anything else, Xiao Chen explained as he was still wary of the goblin, being killed by poisoned food, he had no desire to experience it. Ki, Grogus. Eat. Grogus nodded his head in understanding and quickly took a bite of the roasted boar meat and drank the broth from the soup, a satisfied smile was on his face as he was content with the taste of his work. Dot, Grogus. Food. Safe and tasty. No. Poison, the goblin proudly declared as he continued eating, filling his mouth with a huge piece of boar meat and happily munching it with enjoyment. Chief, can we eat now? Aroshana stared at Xiao Chen with a pleading look as her stomach continued growling after watching the goblin Grogus happily enjoying his meal. All right, it's safe. Just wanted to make sure that he didn't add poison to the food, Xiao Chen softly muttered and quickly Aroshana started to greedily devour the roasted boar meat with large bites and swallowing them quickly with the help of the broth from the soup. Ah! Delicious! Aroshana commented on Grogus cooking and continued to voraciously consume the food. Shaking his head with Aroshana's eating style, Xiao Chen picked a piece of roasted boar meat and brought it to his nose, sniffing the delicious scent then took a bite. Munching slowly and tasting the meat, Xiao Chen was surprised on how well and skillful was Grogus in cooking, slurping the broth that was also as appetizing as the roasted meat. Xiao Chen decided in his mind that Grogus will take care in cooking his meals from now on but must be closely monitored so that the goblin won't do anything sneaky and add something extra on his meals. Chapter 30 You are listening at NovelFull.audio After exploring the backyard of the tribe and ensuring that no enemy can surprise them from behind, Xiao Chen came back along with the goblin cook, Grogus. Seeing the tall wooden walls of the tribe, Grogus can't help but gulp a mouthful of saliva thinking that he had no chance of escaping his fate of being a captive. Xiao Chen went back to check on the progress of the Johan 1st Battalion after being ensured that the little goblin Grogus was being closely watched. The still unhappy Aroshana gladly took the role of being the full dot time warden of Grogus, her face clearly shows her great anticipation for the goblin to try anything suspicious and attempt to escape so that she can have her way with him. A foolish smile was plastered on her face, an expectant look was in her eyes and the itching of her hands caressing her weapon satisfied Xiao Chen. Glancing at Grogus, Xiao Chen can't help but pity the little goblin and engraved in his mind not to antagonize Aroshana for she keeps grudges quiet deeply. After noticing Xiao Chen's presence in the training ground, Exordar ordered his men to play a tune to signal the Johan 1st Battalion of the chief's presence. Quick successive twelve beats of the war drums first sounded then three short blasts of battle horns echoed, then the loud sound of the slow beating war drums and long battle horn sounds filled the training grounds. Inspection Line Sakharin loudly bellowed then re-echoed by all platoon commanders and the Johan 1st Battalion slowly assembled in formation. Thirteen dot man frontage and twelve men deep, marching vertically passing by Xiao Chen's location. The first to pass by was the Black Tortoise Group, the first platoon commanded by Sakharin then the second by Galimnor. The Azure Dragon Group, the White Tiger Group and the Vermilion Bird Group soon followed. 
the warriors of Johan marched totally in sync, their legs rising and moving forward before falling down at the exact same moment. Their 13.man frontage stayed in a true straight line. After passing by Xiao Chen's location, the Johan warriors circled around then formed in one long horizontal line, their default battle line. Xiao Chen came forward to have a closer look at his warriors. The Johan warriors were in great shape, their muscular bodies became more toned, their stamina improved and they became more stronger and tougher than before. It was nearly dusk and the still energetic look of his soldiers proved that the harsh daily training did its job. Previously, by this time his men would look like they were about to drop down any second, their back slouch and their gaze unfocused but now it was like they can still go on without much problem. Pacing around with a satisfied smile on his face, Xiao Chen glanced at his commanders and warriors who had a proud smile on their faces. Standing at the front and center of his army, Xiao Chen nodded with satisfaction on the progress of the Yohan 1st Battalion. All main group commanders. Front and center, Xiao Chen loudly announced, Sakaran, Trotdar, Gurkan and Drigana moved forward towards Xiao Chen, marching with steady and disciplined posture. They moved forward till just a few paces away from the imaginary line in front of Xiao Chen before making a sharp 90 degree turn then continued. The four of them met at the center, Sakaran and Trotdar facing towards Gurkan and Drigana while the latter two were also facing them, then at the exact same time they turned towards Xiao Chen and saluted at the same time by thumping their right closed fist to their left chest. Satisfied with the actions of his commanders, Xiao Chen answered their salute in the same manner before giving them a nod of approval. The next three days, the Yohan warriors will have minimal training and can relax a bit. After three days, they will be trained on how to fight in the battlefield, Xiao Chen said towards his commanders before leaving with a smile on his face and headed towards the craftsmen of the tribe to inquire about the status of the new equipment that he had requested. After the chief left, Gurken turned around and faced the Johan 1st Battalion and loudly bellowed, You heard the chief, three days off. You lucky bastards. Awu. Awu. Awu, the Johan 1st Battalion cheerfully replied and started jumping around while the others heaved a sigh of relief and massaged their sore muscles. The continuous and monotonous harsh daily trainings had taken a toll on their bodies but they can't help but caress their now well dot toned muscles with a smile blooming on their lips. In the distance Adhalia was greatly in awe on how well organized the orcs trained, their training routine was extremely foreign to her. Training arduously every single day, even the Arian royal guards didn't do it nor does she know of any army, training as intense as Xiao Chen's army does. But she was deeply puzzled, their training only improved their bodies and she didn't witness anything related to actual battle like striking targets with swords and spears like how knights practice their battle skills. She wanted to be totally sure that Xiao Chen's army are truly capable of aiding her, in her quest for vengeance before fully committing herself in working for the chief. Unbeknownst to her, an orc was also observing her from a distance while she observes the training of the Johan 1st Battalion. Xiao Chen might have given her freedom to move around the tribe but just for security measures, he needed to keep a close eye on her since according to the system Adhalia's trust rating on him was too damn low which is at a minuscule 20%. And the system advised him to keep a close eye on her since she is more likely to not keep her words and just flee. How is the progress of my request? Xiao Chen questioned the lead craftsman of the Yohan tribe upon arriving at their workplace. Spears and shields were neatly arranged on one side while raw materials were on the other side. Xiao Chen had requested for a shorter but more durable spear since the Sarisa dot like spears were more susceptible to break after encountering a tougher target like the skins of the ogres. The long wooden shafts bent and broke after not being able to penetrate the ogre's more resilient skin which is why Xiao Chen wanted the new shorter spears to be entirely made out of iron. ENV, we have a thousand of the stabbing swords that you requested, chief. We were only able to make 700 of the pure iron spears that you requested since we don't have enough materials to make more. 
the new shields, we have plenty of them, twice more than the number of that of the Johan 1st Battalion since they will surely need replacement after a tough battle, Zuljin the lead craftsman reported to Xiao Chen while ushering him forward with his hands to come closer and take a closer look and inspect the new equipment. The circular dot-shaped shields will now be replaced with large rectangular shields with the edges curved and not sharp, the new shields were made of three layers of wood glued together and covered with coarse canvas and tough leather to prevent it from easily being fractured and destroyed, at the centermost front of the shield was a square dot-shaped metal plate with a metal boss on the front and on the back had four spikes on its four corners. The spikes were then inserted in the three-dot layered wooden shield and tightly bent at the back to help secure the layers together. The new shield had a height of 5 feet with a width of 3 and half feet which could fully cover even the giant Galamnor behind it after crouching down. Xiao Qin didn't want to fully abandon the phalanx formation since it is a very effective formation but the formation moved like a snail and he wanted his army to be mobile and flexible to be able to respond quickly. The phalanx was a great formation hence his request for the shorter but more durable spears. He wants the backbone of his army's battle line to be the spear wielders in a semi-phalanx formation, who will be able to hold off enemy attacks while his sword-wielding warriors will flank the engaged enemies. The outcome of future battles, Xiao Chen had already imagined it in his mind. His spear-wielding warriors, kneeling down, the huge shields in front of them, the butt end of their more durable spears planted on the ground and bracing for impact and the sword wielders circle around in a pincer attack and fell the enemies from the flanks while they are busy trying to get through the shield and spear formation in front of them. The sword wielders will be more mobile and can kill more enemies before they can retreat. They can also give chase to routed enemies unlike those in the phalanx formation who must at all times stay within their formation.